Hey there guys, welcome to today's live stream. So, before I get started, there's a few things that I want to discuss um, as far as sort of as it relates to my business and sort of some of the changes that I've been trying to um, implement. So, I sort of posted it recently, but I do want to mention that as far as my live streams are concerned, I'm trying to create more visuals with them and sort of as it relates to like workouts, I want to do more workout videos that um, are easy to follow. Uh, body weight exercises is probably what I'm going to start doing on Instagram, uh, doing like step by step sort of tutorial like videos. Um, so I will definitely let you guys know when I start that. but. I'm working on trying to implement more visual things into a lot of the stuff I talk about because I know when I do these live streams, it's more of me not me talking and not really actually, you know, showing you visually how these exercises work, even though I'm sort of discussing the steps. I understand that it's sort of difficult to sort of understand the visual aspect of it. So that's what I'm working on next is to start implementing more actual exercises, discussing form, uh, showing you how to do very simple exercises, exercises that require not a lot of equipment, I guess you would say, body weight exercises to start out. And then I may gradually move into um, maybe dumbbell based workouts or anything of that sort that's easy to do at home that you can get started. Because of course, you know, my target sort of audience I guess you would say it's people who are very new to weightlifting and that's sort of what I want to do is to help it to be more engaging so definitely watch out for those videos I will likely have those on Instagram that's probably where I'm going to do those um, where it'll be a little bit more because I do a lot of more vertical based videos on Instagram so I think that's where I'm going to focus that on and I may on here on Facebook just continue to do more I guess like a lecture discussion uh, sort of format um, so that's sort of what I've been thinking about I just wanted to share that with you guys um, and another thing that I want to mention is I am trying to work on uh, fixing a lot of the quality of my content so I just recently ordered a ring light to sort of help you know make my content a little bit more just add more quality and production to my content so I'm trying to work on finding new ways that I can share you know continue to give you guys value but can share more uh, quality as it relates to my content so again I'm going to start doing those sort of exercise videos later on I haven't decided yet when I'm going to do those but I'm going to start doing those pretty soon um, likely on Instagram when I do my live streams there. Uh, Facebook will probably stay the same where it'll be me discussing various topics. Um, but I do want to make these to where I'm sort of explaining a little bit more, showing you a little bit more visuals. Another thing too with these Facebook live streams, I'm planning on adding more visuals into the presentations so that you can see how if I'm discussing an exercise, how it's specifically performed step by step instead of me just talking about it. Because I'm that's one of the things, especially for me, is I'm a very visual person. So I feel like that's the best way to go into helping you guys sort of understand a little bit more of the concepts that I talk about. Because I know I talk about some lar like big concepts that aren't easy to understand and I try to make them more simplified. But I know that visually it's better to see something than it being said um so that's sort of the things that i wanted to announce before i got started um but with that being said uh we're going to go ahead and go through today's topic which is talking about balance training um so for balance training there are a lot of key components when it comes to balance training and what i'm going to do is sort of define exactly what that means so basically what balance training or balance in itself is the ability to maintain postural control and balance and it's a key component of a performance or an exercise so there are so many different dynamics as it relates to balance training and i'll explain the types of exercises that are involved in balance training towards the end 
Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about different types of, I guess you'd say, balance techniques. So there are different mechanisms as it relates to balance. And this is all sort of how the body um, basically interacts with the world around us. The things that we do uh, every day, like every day in our daily life, there's a sense of balance with everything that we do as far as, you know, even beyond workouts. It's, it's very integral into everyday life. So there's three mechanisms of balance and that's known as a visual, vestibular, and somal sensory. So vision is pretty self-explanatory. It's typically used to provide information to the central nervous system about the body's location in space. So with vision, you're when you're able to see your surroundings around you, that's sort of part of the mechanism of balance. You probably had that, had like a, I know there's like a certain exercise that's done where you close your eyes and you try to stay balanced. Uh, that's sort of where vision plays a role in it uh, because our vision itself is actually very important to how we balance because we're able to visually see what's around us and we're able to assess our environment. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is that vision is very important when it comes to balance. Vestibular, that means the vestibular system and is controlled by sensory receptors in the inner ear and provide the brain with information about spatial orientation and head in space. So the vestibular system is basically sort of the brain and sort of, you know, using these receptors to sort of be aware of our environment. This is more of an internal thing rather than, you know, like vision. Um, somatosensory, somatosensory is referring to the ability to feel changes in the skin, muscle length, and joint angles. I don't know why I put angels, but angles. <laughs> so, again, this is more about sort of things that you feel. Um, like, for example, if you're doing like some kind of balance exercises, you're able to sort of feel your muscle length in your leg. It's not something that you see on the outside, but you're able to feel it on the inside with any action that you're doing. So doing any kind of balance exercise, say like you're lunging forward, you're feeling and you're balancing on a single leg, you're feeling that muscle length tension change. Um, so that's just basically anything related to the skin or anything as far as muscle changes, that's what that means. So all of these different systems, they all relate to each other. They all play a key role in the mechanisms of balance. And now what I'm going to do is sort of discuss a little bit more about sort of the rationale for integrating balance training into your workouts. And I do balance training pretty often. I actually like doing balance training. It's... There's something about it, it's just the ability to sort of have a challenge because I feel like when you're focusing on balance, you're adding, you know, you're not only focusing, like, for example, I do a lot of kettlebell balance exercises, and so I'm going to I'm have to, you know, have control of the weight while being able to maintain my balance at the same time. So it challenges multiple sort of aspects of your workout when you're integrating balance into it. It makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, so that's something that I really like about doing balance exercises. So let's discuss some of the benefits for balance training as it relates to performance. So, and I'll discuss towards the end exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about balance training. Any exercises related to balance training I'll discuss into more detail. Um, first, I'm going to discuss sort of some of what the benefits are when you integrate this into your workout routine. So what it does, as far as relating to performance, balance training improves static and dynamic posture. It improves basically your overall posture to sort of simplify that. It improves neuromuscular control in the lower extremities. So you're building more control in your legs basically to sort of sum it up in your lower extremity area, it's going to improve balance after injury. So again, well, not again, but 
As far as balance training, it's actually used for rehabilitation, which I'll discuss in the next slide, but it's going to improve balance after injury. So when you're implementing balance training now, it's going to improve even if you have an injury. So and it also improves your lower extremity muscle strength, muscular strength, which goes hand in hand with neuromuscular control. So neuromus neuromuscular control is sort of controlling that specific movement that you're doing, such as a lunge, you're controlling that movement. Whereas muscular strength is having the ability to, you know, lift more with a specific muscle. So you're able to lift more with your lower extremity. So it's going to improve your lower extremity muscular strength. It also improves your ability to participate in activities of daily living and decrease self-reported disability in older adults. So this is a great thing for older adults as well, but overall it's going to improve anything that you do in your daily life. Any sort of, any basic thing that you do day to day, whether it be, you know, cert, if you're like, maybe you do certain jobs and it requires a little bit more coordination that's going to help with that um, so and also it's going to decrease disability in older adults so it's going to help older adults sort of this kind of goes into the rehabilitation aspect of it but it helps to you know improve their overall muscular strength uh, so another thing it does is improves agility based outcomes in athletes this is very beneficial for athletes um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So there's a lot of performance benefits as it relates to balance training. So balance training as it relates to resistance, resistance of injury. So when you integrate balance training, it's going to help with reducing injury. So it's going to improve your landing mechanics, mechanics, which may reduce lower extremity. I guess lower extremity injury. So it improves performance in athletes such as vertical jump. It's going to reduce that risk of falling in older adults. And it's going to improve physical performance and overall confidence during activities of daily living in older adults. So overall, it's going to help a lot with the lower extremity. Um, it's going to reduce the risk of falling in older adults. That's sort of that resistance from injury. It's going to improve their physical performance in older adults and they're able to do more of activities of daily living now when i talk about activities of daily living that's just the normal day-to-day -day things that we do it's going to build more confidence in those older individuals so it's very beneficial for not only you know athletes or younger popu populations but it's more beneficial as well for older adults so balance training as it relates to rehabilitation so, like I just discussed a little bit ago, is that balance training is not only just about performance, it's not only just about, you know, resistance to injury, but it's also about rehabilitation. It's used in that aspect as well. So, as far as when it relates to rehabilitation, it improves the performance during single limb movements. It's going to improve proprioception and self-reported function in athletes with ankle instability. And it enhances rehabilitation outcomes for both limbs for athletes who suffer an ACL injury and surgery on one limb. And it also enhances rehabilitation outcomes that focus on decreasing the risk of falls in older adults. So again, it brings back, you know, sort of that reducing the risk of injury. But again, this is very beneficial for rehabilitation purposes as well. So with all of that being said... What I want to explain it next is sort of the different types of exercises and a little bit about the progression of balance training. Well, before I get to that, let's talk about this. So proprioceptive enriched environments, which are kind of just discussed, that's basically training on an unstable yet controllable and on an unstable yet controllable environment that causes the body to use its internal balance and stabilization mechanisms. So a lot of balance training is sort of focused on this aspect. For example, when you talk about something that's proprioceptive enriched, that would be, for example, like being on a BOSU ball, which is basically a stability ball that's cut in half. I do a lot of these exercises a lot because I, I just I like the challenge of it. 
But a bouncy ball, when you have it have it face down with the ball portion at the bottom, it sort of challenges your stability on that surface. So that's basically a proprioceptive enriched environment is when you're standing on that BOSU ball and trying to sort of hold your balance. It's holding your balance on that unstable surface. Okay, so what I want to discuss last year is sort of the different types of exercises related to balance training. And like I said in the future, I'm going to start making these a little bit more defined and showing you step by step of these specific exercises. So that's going to be what I'm going to improve on in the future, like I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream. But let's go ahead and discuss some of these here. And I'll try to explain them the best way I can. So you have a tan. This is sort of the first progression that you have here. These are like sample exercises with like the first progression of starting balance training. So you have a tandem stance, a single leg balance, single leg balance and reach, single leg, le single leg hip internal and external rotation, single leg lift and chop, and single leg windmill. A lot of these, again, you're focusing on single leg. So it's all about, you know, balance. Single leg balance is pretty self-explanatory. It's just focusing on staying balanced in a stationary position, staying stable. Single leg balance and reach is sort of what's pictured here to the left. Um, well, for, except for not using a dumbbell. So again, this is the first progress, progression. So you wouldn't really use a whole lot of weight when you're starting out doing balance training. So a single leg reach, balance reach would be more of using your body weight and reaching and being able to hold your balance in that particular motion. A single leg lift and chop is basically holding your single leg stance and then being able to do like a certain chop motion. A uh, single leg windmill is sort of the same thing. You're doing like a windmill motion, but holding sort of that balance. Um, another progression that I don't have mentioned here. So this is the next pro progression beyond this first set of exercises. So after you've sort of mastered these types of exercises, you would move on to like a single leg squat, a single leg squat touchdown, single leg Romanian deadlift, multiplayer step up to balance, multiplayer and lunge to balance. A lot of these I've done myself. Um, single leg squat is one of my favorite things to do. Same with uh, the Romanian deadlift. Anything like that. Those are of course more dynamic and more advanced exercises. That's the next sort of progression versus these. Whereas your first set of exercises is going to fo focus on you being in just a simple, stable, static position most of the time, or using little movement. But then when you're moving on to more advanced exercises, you're going to focus on doing, you know, sort of more active, more dynamic movements versus the first set of balance exercises you do, if that makes sense. So again, this, what I've got here on screen is just the first sort of exercises that you would do to sort of keep your you know, to start your balance training. And then you, when I talked about next with single leg squat and all of those exercises, that's your progression beyond these. So once you've sort of mastered this set of workouts, you would move on to the next one to progress with your balance training. Um, so again, I sort of wanted to discuss this a little bit because it's, it's just as important as anything else. I talk about all the time I talk about, well, it scared me. <laughs> I talk about posture and uh, sort of flexibility or anything of that sort because it's important to sort of be aware of all these things. So, because it's, it's not only focused on, you know, just the particular, you know, that particular training method, that training method is actually gonna help you further on when you're doing more advanced workouts. Anything like flexibility, core, uh, balance is going to help you beyond, you know, just that specific, specific type of training. It's going to help you with resistance training, especially because balance, a lot of resistance training is going to require balance. 
When you're using dumbbells, that requires balance, being able to be stable, holding those dumbbells. Barbell, it's the same way. It requires a lot of balance. So these exercises by themselves, it's not just about these exercises by themselves, but it's about beyond those exercises. So when you want to want to move into more weightlifting and resistance training, when you implement things like this, these types of workouts, it's going to help you to be able to progress to resistance training because that requires balance. It requires some of the stuff that I discussed previously, flexibility, core training, um, balance. All of these are sort of integral parts to moving on to more advanced based exercises. So that's something that I sort of wanted to discuss. I like to get into detail with these exercises and again, always relate it to, you know, your specific goals, you know. You know, this is more than just a specific set of training. It's going to help you beyond, you know, this type of training method. So I just wanted to discuss that with you guys. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, and you can definitely contact me here. I've got my contact information. I have my phone and email here. If you have questions, as always, about anything I've discussed today or any previous live stream I've discussed, you can always reach out to me. And let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know of any feedback that you may have. Um, but with all that being said, thank you guys for taking time to watch this. I have a good live stream set for next week talking about going to talking about flexibility mainly and stretching. Um, and I'm going to have a little bit more into detail on specific exercises that you can do as it relates to stretching. But again, sort of. Um, Stay on the lookout for my next live streams that I'll do because I'm going to start doing a little bit more of explaining specific workouts more. Um, that's where I'm trying to gear to next to sort of help sort of give a more visual um, presentation to uh, some of my live streams. So again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next live stream.